Hi, Dr. Reagan Robertson, CCO of Productive Dentist Academy here, and I have a question for you. Are you finding it hard to get your team aligned to your vision, but you know you deserve growth just like everybody else? That's why we've created the PDA Productivity Workshop. For nearly 20 years, PDA workshops have helped dentists just like you align their teams, get control of scheduling, and create productive practices that they love walking into every day. Just imagine how you will feel when you know your schedule is productive, your systems are humming, and your team is aligned to your vision. It's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. We can help. Visit ProductiveDentist.com slash workshop. That's ProductiveDentist.com slash workshop to secure your seats now. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Bruce B. Baird, and you're listening to the Productive Dentist Podcast. In this podcast, I will give you everything that I've learned over the last 40 years in dentistry, working with thousands of dentists. I'll tell you, it's not that my way is the only way. It's just one that has worked extremely well for me, and and I'd love to share that with you so you too can enjoy the choices and lifestyle that productivity allows. More time for things you love, increased pay, better team relationships, and lowered stress. Let's get into it with this week's episode of the Productive Dentist Podcast. Hi, this is Dr. Bruce Baird with the Productive Dentist Podcast. I uh, first have a little... uh, little thank yous to go around. Uh, we were voted, the Productive Dentist Podcast was voted the number three rated podcast out of 69 podcasts in the dental industry. And I'd really like to say thank you. I, I enjoy sharing sharing my experiences over the last 40 years. And and I'm, I'm just super stoked. I couldn't believe it. Uh, what was really cool is the Productive Dentist Podcast uh, Academy, we had three of the top five podcasts, uh, along with uh, Everyday Practices with uh, my buddies, Chad Johnson and Reagan, who runs uh, all of the marketing, Reagan Robertson, who runs all the marketing at Productive Dentist Academy and does pretty much everything else. And my partner, Victoria uh, Peterson, who is the... uh, has started the podcast uh, called Investment Grade Practice. So uh, thanks again for those uh, for those votes that you guys did. Uh, I'd also like to say thank you for all of our new listeners. We've got a lot of new listeners out there now. And uh, so today I wanted to talk about something that, uh, oh, I want to tell you one more thing. We are Coming out with a brand new book that should be out by June of this year. It's called Legendary Leadership, and um, I'm excited about it. Uh, I think it's something that can help any business, any any industry, and uh, it goes into the good, the bad, and the ugly of leadership. Which, uh, if you've been listening to my podcast, you know that uh, there there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad uh, about my career. And I share I share that in the book about how I overcame some of my difficulties to uh, to become a better leader. Uh, becoming a legendary leader is not something that is uh, is totally attainable, but it's something that we should always be working for is to become a legendary leader. So thank you guys for the votes. Thank you so much. And uh, again, coming out with the book, I'll I'll give you guys first uh, first shot at it uh, when I when it's coming out. So today, what I'd like to to look look at and, and to talk about is how, how do you hire people? Do you hire people based on experience? Uh, is that is that what you're looking for? Are you looking for somebody to be working at the front front desk that has had a lot of experience at the front desk, or do you look for people dental assistants who've had lots of dental assisting experience? Is that is that your way of looking at it? Well, it, it was mine. Early in my career, I, I almost always looked for people with a lot of experience. And and what I what I began to realize is if you're the type practitioner, if you're the type dentist who has solid systems and has um, really, uh, you know, for collections, for uh, for greeting people, for answering the phone, for how you bring patients back, how you do everything in your office should be set up, as you know, just like the e-myth. 
Um, the e-myth tells you that everything has to be done in a certain way in a business as if you were going to franchise that business, which is kind of interesting. And I, I read that book back in the early 80s, and it was one of those books that kind of changed the track of my career. It didn't happen overnight, but I wanted to have the system so solid that every system was trainable. Every system was uh, something that not anybody could do, but somebody with the right personality could do it. And so what I would find is I would bring somebody in with a lot of experience. And what they would do is they would bring their previous experience, which you would think is always good. They'd bring that into the practice. And in a short period of time, uh, and I'm not saying don't hire people with experience, but I said in a short period of time, what we would find is they would bring their past experience what was successful for them and what was unsuccessful for them in their past uh, office, and they would bring it to the new office. And even though it was something that I wouldn't be, oh, I, I wouldn't be asking for, some of the some of the systems in the office would begin to slowly change. Have you ever done that where you you've got a uh, you, you've got a situation where you, you decided this is how we're going to take care of our uh, this is how we're going to take care of uh, let's say recare. We're going to do it a certain way, and you have your team meeting once a month or once a week or however often you do it, and you're not paying attention on a daily basis. And we've talked about this quite a bit. It, it, you always inspect what you expect, but as human nature is, we forget to do that. And now we're two months down the road, three months, four months, six months, a year down the road, and we start asking about our recare system. And the recare system is is not even close to the way that you started that recare system and the way you wanted it. You know, we wanted to send out, you know, for recare, we wanted to always pre-appoint and then we wanted to call them uh, 72 hours ahead. And then we'd call with a reminder. We sent a text and then we'd uh, call with a reminder a day before the appointment. And what what I found was, well, that system was totally different. And why was it different? Well, it was different because that person who came in that had experience in this arena went to their old way of doing it because that that's you know what they were used to doing and that can be great because sometimes it's a new system that's better than the system that you have i understand that but i i have expectations of the way i want to run my business now early on in my career i didn't know what i wanted i didn't understand it so i hired uh i hired based upon just about any category if the person uh, seemed like they were nice, uh, again, early in my career, if you could, if you had a pulse, I would probably hire you. You remember some of the stories I tell about, you know, going through team, you know, one after the other. And I joked that everybody in Granbury used to work for me. I was such a bad boss. But the truth is, as we began to see the, you know, as we began to see these uh, and my office grew, grew, and I began to see the people that I was bringing in were bringing all of their own experiences, and it ended up, I ended up hiring five people, eight people, 10 people. Remember, we went from a team of about four to 20 in the first year. And what I found was, it was very difficult for me to keep any system in, in the office, because every time I'd hire somebody, the, the system would change. And so, uh, and again, early in my career, uh, I hired. Uh, Based on based on experience, and uh, I hate to say it, but you know, if, if the person was very attractive and 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 a good communicator, well, they had the job. Uh, not even based on experience. And what what I found was uh, again the difficulty in having what I called the model practice. And the model practice, I did a lot of a lot of study, a lot of work on what I wanted my practice to be like. That was what was important to me. This is the way I want my practice to be. These are the systems I want to have in my practice. It's not to say that it's my way or the highway like it was early in my career, but it, I wanted certain systems. And then I would evaluate each of those systems and I would determine, you know, this one's not working. I would talk to friends. I would talk to mentors. I would go to courses on different systems in, in my practice. What we teach at Productive Dentist Academy is these are the systems. This is how this is what you do. This is how we greet. This is the new patient exam. This is the this is how we do do everything within the practice. Because if things are repeatable, consistently repeatable, 
and you see success in, in a system, doesn't mean you won't change certain things. I'll give you an example. In my new patient exam, my new patient exam is always the same until I come up with a new phrase or a new way of talking about something. And then I'll, I'll place that into my one act play, my, uh, my routine, and I'll try it. If it works, great. I love it. If it doesn't, well, then I'm back away from that. And I'll, I'll try something else in the future a- as they come about. But I think what became very uh, important to me, and, and we've talked about it, is when you're building an investment grade practice or you're building a practice that has value for, for forever, that you want to make sure that your systems are very, very stable. My preference today is to hire somebody, and for the last 15 to 18 years, is to hire somebody based on their personality that somebody that can look in your eyes and say hello with a smile that uh, has, you know, has that, um, has the, that character trait that people are drawn to, that people like, you know, you see it every day. When I go to Del Frisco's in Fort Worth, there's three or four people there that I look at and I go, wow, what a great employee. I go to, I go to uh, here in town to uh, several of the restaurants or I go to the bank and I'm talking to somebody and, and you just see some people just, they're, they're a positive energy. And I know it sounds crazy. You'd love to, uh, you know, you'd love for somebody like that to have experience but the experience brings with them the baggage from their previous experiences. Root Laboratory, who I say is the best lab in the world, I, I always like to say that because I've been using the guys for 37 years. They don't hire people with experience in the lab business. They train exactly the way they want it done. And I found that that, that really was very important in my own practice. I had to become a great trainer. I had to become somebody who could teach. Uh, my employees exactly the way I wanted it done. Most of my most of my team, uh, besides hygienists, obviously, but most of my team are people who had very little or no experience in the dental industry. So, it, to me, it's extremely important for them to teach it my way. Uh, we're running a play. Our play has lines. Our play has certain roles and characters, and I hire for those and. We have the systems in place. Now, if I'm a brand new dentist just starting out, yeah, I hired somebody with Dentrix experience because that was the software. And certainly it wasn't when I first started because there weren't computers when I first started. But as we, yes, I got somebody with that, but you have to be very careful and, and to really train. Training for an investment grade practice, in my opinion, is probably the most important thing that you can possibly do. Take these, take these employees, teach them exactly the way you want it done. And then take the time. It might be once every month. It might be once a week. Take a look at that system. Take a look at that front desk, how they how they do things uh, and 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 evaluate it. Give them feedback. Help them become the best version of themselves, the best front office person, because my goal is I want to have the best chair side. I want to have the best hygienist. I want to have the best uh, across the board, you know, in, in all those different arenas. And is it easy? Well, if it was easy, anybody could do it. <laughs> and so, uh, no, you know, being in dental, being being a dentist, and and having a team of however many people you have, no, it's not easy. It's it's very difficult. But this has got to be an intentional activity. It's got to be something that you do on a regular basis. And what you'll find is the better job you do up front, the less worry you have in the long run and the easier your practice is going to run and the less stress. Remember what happens to productivity when you're under stress goes up. Well, I love it when it goes down. I love it when you're you're checking the things that you need to check. So anyway, that's uh, that's the podcast for today. Do you hire for experience or do you hire for personality? Um, and how that person is. So uh, thanks again for the voting on the, on the podcast. And I look forward to sharing, sharing the book, Legendary Leadership with you in the future. Uh, here's to next time. I'll see you. See you soon. 
Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Productive Dentist Podcast. If you found this episode helpful, make sure you subscribe. Pass it along to a friend. Give us a like on iTunes and Spotify or drop me an email at podcast at productivedentist.com. Don't forget to check out other podcasts from the Productive Dentist Academy at productivedentistpodcast.com. Join me again next week for another episode of the Productive Dentist Podcast.